I'm Neil Walder for Kit Guru. This laptop is the ASUS Republic of Gamers GX501VI Zephyros, uh, which may sound familiar because I previewed the Zephyros uh, two weeks ago, uh, but it has now been released, or more accurately, the uh, NVIDIA Max-Q technology that uh, this laptop uses has been released. So here we are running Gears of War 4 benchmark, and unusually I haven't got the power brick connected. Here's the power brick. Here. Here's the power cord, not connected. And ordinarily that is something I would not do because as we know, laptops without the power run dog slow compared to their max potential. And the funny thing is that this laptop can get away without the power. It does run slower without the power plugged in, but that Gears of War 4 benchmark uh, with power uh, about 104 frames a second, without power, 88. And there we have it. Let's just have a look and see if I'm lying to you. 88, 88 FPS. So absolutely brilliant. Um, and that is, that's unusual and impressive. And it, uh, it reinforces when Jensen Huang of NVIDIA uh, showed off Max-Q uh, at Computex, he was showing some racing game or other, and he didn't have the power core connected, which seemed like a uh, curious move. Uh, and at the time we were saying, well, what's going on there then? Uh, explain. And there was no explanation. And we, we had speculation. Luca and myself had a discussion on video uh, shortly after Computex, and we weren't quite sure about the details. Here's what we know. So essentially what NVIDIA has done with Max-Q is they've used a lower power profile. They've, they've probably binned the GPUs they're um, designating as Max-Q. They're, they're better chips. That's part of the guess. They've come up with a lower power profile. We've heard the figure of one volt, which seems like a nice round number. And then they've cut the speed. So this GTX 1080 uh, runs at 1297 megahertz core speed and it boosts to 1436. So you're talking 250 50 to 300 megahertz shy of a uh, bog ordinary uh, GTX 1080 and as we know if you overclock a GTX 1080 you can go as high as 2 gigahertz so it's uh, 250-300 megahertz shy of uh, standard clock speeds and the curve that NVIDIA was showing at Computex showed that if you take off the top X percent of performance you save they were saying up to half the power so it's clearly we'll take off some of the performance and we'll save a good chunk of power that's what they've done and clearly to a certain extent it works now I don't think it is any coincidence that Azus has decided with the Zephyros to use a 1080 panel rather than the 4k or 1440 or some such because a, how can I put this, a GTX 1080 Lite Max-Q, it seems to me like it's a Lite, uh, or if you're being really cruel, a GTX 1070 Ti, but whatever you want to call it, a slower 1080, so it's got all the shaders, it's got the standard amount of uh, D uh, DDR5X memory, uh, so that's the equivalent of five gigabit memory, it's got the same memory controller, it's got all the shaders, it's just running slower than you would expect. And as a result, it can, power along uh, at 1080, no trouble whatsoever. Uh, I haven't tried it at 4K with an external display, I really cannot see the point, particularly as this laptop, as Zeus was telling me, is pre-release, so it's not completely finished. The hardware actually seems to me to be retail, uh, but I don't doubt there'll be driver updates. So taking every last piece of information and so on and so forth out of the performance is a bit daft. I'm looking at the bigger picture here. And this hardware running at 1080, it steams along. All the game figures which you'll see on Kit Guru, so Ashes of the Singularity got crazy, 55 frames a second. Drop it down to high from crazy, 69 frames a second. Lovely. It's a 120 hertz panel, so you can keep all the, the sync turned on to use G-Sync. Lovely. Looks great. What's don't I like about it? Temperatures. Um, I was comparing this uh, Zephyros with the ASUS ROG G701VI, which is a 6 series Core i7-6820HK, very similar clock speeds to the 7700HQ, uh, GTX 1080 in that laptop, GTX 1080 Max-Q in this laptop, so that had therefore faster graphics, and the performance of that laptop compared to this laptop certainly better and that's despite the fact as we know you get graphics updates and such like driver updates they get better and better this is a next gen processor that laptop performed better nonetheless the difference although it's quite sig it is significant it doesn't mean this laptop doesn't perform adequately to put that in numbers that laptop the sixth gen in ashes of the singularity crazy 65 frames a second 
this laptop uh, to crazy, 55 frames a second. Now, undeniably, the drivers and such like are gonna have helped this figure. If I went back and retested the 701 VI, I don't doubt it would now do more than 65 frames a second because that's the way of the world. Nonetheless, the 55 frames this thing can do is sufficient. Drop it down to high quality, 69 frames a second, whereas that 701 VI did 81 frames a second. So the older laptop with the previous gen CPU and the full fat GTX 1080 performs better than the Max-Q. That's all there is to it. The thing is that laptop was chunky and it was heavy and it wasn't super noisy. That would be unfair to say, it was okay. But this laptop is really thin, really light. And that is the point of it. They've done what they've done in order to get the thing slimmed down. Now the temperatures inside this laptop are towards the toastyish end of the scale. The CPU idles at 60, put it under max synthetic load, it goes up to 94 and is a bit unhappy. During gaming, it's a bit below that because 90 is a significant figure with an Intel chip. The GPU idles at 45 goes up to 79 and that is significantly lower than the previous full fat GTX 1080 because that's running around the 89, 90 under load. So this GPU is not working as hard. The cooling is clearly up to the job and it therefore is, the CPU is running slightly more toasty, the GPU is slightly cooler, add it all together, it's okay. Um, you can see what they've done with the thermal package and the uh, cooling, and they've done some good work inside this laptop. Power draw is down, it's about 100 watts actually. So that laptop, the previous uh, idled at 40 watts, this takes 45, under load this takes 170, that took 265. So they've cut about 100 watts out of the power draw. Now the processor is probably contributing a little bit of that, but most of that power logically is coming from the GPU. And to see 195 watts actually is a great surprise because all the figures that we saw from Nvidia were suggesting it was going to be 60 uh, and that to my mind that seemed ambitious because to take 60 watts out of the power of the GPU you've got to surely kill performance uh, but somehow or other Asus has found more power to be saved elsewhere let's say that that 95 watt power saving is 60 from the GPU and 35 from I don't know where uh, that's pretty good it suggests what Nvidia said at Computex is bang on the money uh, which is very pleasant to report. And the question mark is, is throttling the GPU a good idea? My, every instinct of my being is to say that taking a GTX 1080 and slowing it down is a bad idea. Uh, if this GPU wasn't called a GTX 1080 Max Q, but was called a GTX 1070 Ti, I think I'd be popping the party streamers and shouting from the rooftops. I think that'd be a very good thing indeed, uh, particularly as I'd expect then that to be very slightly cheaper than a GTX 1080. My suspicion is, and this is purely a suspicion, is that by calling this GPU a GTX 1080 Max Q, Nvidia's selling it for the same money as a regular GTX 1080. I wouldn't put it past them to charge a premium actually, um, because they've done a clever thing, which means you can package it in a thin laptop. Anyway, if we take the cynicism off the table and we look at the fact that this is a really thin, light laptop that can run off a sensible power brick, but can game without the power brick, then that's a tick, 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 good work. The chassis is clever. The way that the cooling's all at the back uh, because there's so little thickness to the chassis. It's an evil necessity. I'm not a fan of the keyboard. Uh, the very short travel keys pulled to the front. I, I just cannot love that keyboard. The touchpad mouse buttons over to the side. I don't like it. Didn't, didn't Razer do something similar? I think Razer did something similar and that didn't go down well with the public, but whether they did or did not, Pulling the keyboard forward, we've certainly seen something similar with um, an MSI Titan, which are a completely different animal, much thicker mechanical keyboard, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but the keyboard pulled to the front and the number pad over to the side. Uh, I wasn't mad keen on that, but mechanical keyboard had travel. This has really short travel. It's 1.4 millimeters. Uh, it's, it's very clever to have fitted it into such a thin chassis, but nonetheless, I cannot love that. I can respect it, but I can't love it. If you're using this laptop, for goodness sake, have a plug-in mouse and keyboard, um, otherwise you drive yourself crazy. That's my feeling anyway. Uh, Max-Q works. The ASUS ROG Zephyros is 
uh, they have an exclusive with this laptop with the Max Q1080 uh, for all of 2017, as far as I'm aware. So therefore, if you want a GTX 18 Max Q, this is a laptop you're buying. It's a good laptop. Um, the screen is a delight. The hardware is good. Not that bit. Uh, not that bit. The rest of it's good. The screen is really good. The ports and connectors are excellent. The Wi-Fi is superb. Like it a lot. The battery is a disappointment. I mean, it's a shame there's no space to put a bigger battery, but there just isn't. Uh, so you are making compromises to have a thin chassis and that's what this comes down to is how much are you prepared to spend and how much pain are you prepared to put up with for a thin chassis and a lightweight gaming laptop in a 15.6 inch form factor and if the answer is you want it as thin as possible and as light as possible but quiet because this is quiet then it's a success. If you don't want to make those compromises and you don't mind it being a bit thicker, uh, more space for the battery and the keyboard and such like, then this is probably the wrong laptop for you. Uh, but compared to my initial skepticism when I was discussing Max-Q with Luke, this is a success and I like it a great deal. The fact it's cheaper than the uh, ROG G701 VI laptop, that's uh, an added bonus. Nonetheless, it is not cheap. You're paying quite a decent sum of money for a good gaming laptop. Uh, but nonetheless, this does not perform as a typical GTX 80 because it is max Q and that means it's slower. Still, there are benefits to be gained and that is welcome to see. Uh, if you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from Kit Guru, click to subscribe. I'm Neil Warder for Kit Guru. This is a Zeus ROG GX501VI Zephyros.